G'day guys, welcome back to Tradio Podcast, proudly powered by Trade Tools. For those of you that don't know me, my name's Brad, I myself am a tradie, but I've recently hung up the tool belt to bring you guys podcasts and videos courtesy of Trade Tools. So in this podcast, I interview tradies and people at different stages in their careers and from all walks of life. So whatever you're doing today, whether you're flat out or just kicking back, we'd like to say thanks for listening to Tradio and enjoy. All right, we are on, mate. We are on. Okay, so uh, welcome back to Tradio, guys. We got Makita Mick here with us, obviously from Makita, and uh, we're going to run through some. So I want to know a lot about Makita, mate. I really don't know, uh, don't know much about how it all works. So uh, first, kick yourself with uh, a little bit about yourself, mate. Yeah, mate. Uh, well, thanks for having us. Firstly, that's all right. No worries. Glad, mate, glad to have you in. A little bit about myself. Um, I've worked for Makita now for for just a bit over six years. Yep. Um, mate, um, when I'm not working for Makita, um, mm. uh, and I'm not drinking beer, I yeah. am. Uh, I'm a, a father of one and um, a husband, so yep. it keeps uh, as you can imagine, mate. Nice and fam- busy. The family keeps me busy, and yep. uh, there's always uh, plenty of, plenty of stuff to do around the house. So. Absolutely. You Gold Coast based. Um, I'm based, uh, I live in a little, little suburb called Woodhill, um, yeah. and for anyone that's listening and doesn't know where that is, it's yeah. halfway between uh, Jim Boomba and Bow Desert, just uh, okay, right. just off the Mount Lindsay Highway there. Yeah, very good. Let's kick off with a little bit of the Makita history, I guess. Like, where did Makita come from? Oh, man, look, I think um, it's it's one of those things. Like, Makita is obviously a Japanese-based company, yeah, yeah. Um, so in 2015, we, we celebrated 100 years as a, as oh, a corporation. Right. So it's um, we've, been, we've been around for a long time. Yeah, right. Um, you know, and originally when we, we started to become a company all those many, many moons ago, yeah. um, we really just made small engines. Is that what it started as? Just a small engine business, and for, it was nearly just- For uh, cars? For cars and stuff yep. like that, and, and machinery um, yep. as well. So um, they really just specialised in that for, yeah, for right. 40 years. And then um, and then sort of, yeah, in the, the late 50s there, yeah. they um, they invented this little thing called a, an electric portable planer. Oh, yeah, a, okay. Pretty much a staple in every uh, in every builder's uh, yeah, toolbox sure. and trailer these days. So was that, was that the first- Tool they produced a planer. Yeah, correct. It's yeah, the cool. uh, it's the uh, the hero. The right. Hero. So yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Oh, this is good. I like <laughs> this already. And then uh, where'd they go from there? What? Um, well, you know, they, I mean, you've sort of got you know about ten years later, and they sort of they went from sort of power products, and we still yep. do make make power products, but it was yep. started to go into the cordless the cordless industry. So yep. yep. It was the same year uh, Neil, Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. Ah, right. We, so uh, is it, when did cordless sort of start? Uh, not specifically for Makita, but when was? Oh, look, I, I didn't know it was that long ago. Yeah, look, I'd say it was in the mid-60s and, and Makita yeah, right. sort of, the, 1969 is the year. It's the year yep. that the first uh, rechargeable cordless drive, I should say, yeah, okay, come, right. come, come under the market. And I mean, look at that now, what are we, it's only 50 years ago. Yeah. So, Cordless tools have been around for a long time. Yep. The technology has just really oh, yeah. just yeah. really moved along, I guess you could say. Yeah, well, look at the last 10 years, last five years even. Everything is just, it's going crazy. Yeah, because I've been with Makita for six years, and I remember one of our promotional pieces six years ago was we had 80, 80 cordless tools on the platform. And yeah, yeah. We were having a coffee the other day, and we I think we have about 220-something now. Yeah, so right. in, in in that time we've we've nearly nearly tripled. Yeah, the range. yeah, that's so crazy. It's uh, come a long way. We gotta we gotta ask a question, mate. Uh, what are, what about new tools on the on the horizon? Have you got any? I know you're not allowed to say too much, but but what 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 can you say? Uh, well, without uh, without giving it away, mate. Uh, look, there's, there's a few. There's always new products um, in development. I guess a, a couple of things you know that. We sort of get asked quite regularly about um, the pop rivet guns are, are very, very, very close to, to releasing. So they they should be sort of in the next month or two. Yeah, right. I would imagine you can get into get into your local trade tool store and yeah, very and, good. Uh, and pick, <laughs> pick, a, pick a couple of them up. There's a couple of models of them uh, yeah, coming right. out, so they'll be good. Uh, we do have a a I believe it's an 18 times two. Yeah, uh, call this pressure washer. Right. So that um, I don't have an ETA. I yeah. I've seen some photos and videos. Um, okay. The, uh, social media is a wonderful tool for that sort of stuff. Cordless pressure washer. Yeah. yeah. So pretty compact little uh, little unit. Very compact little unit, and and probably the, the kicker is, you know, people might think, well, it may be a cordless pressure washer, but you still need a water source. Yeah. This has its own water tub. You can uh, connect it to. Right. So, so uh, you just uh, pre-fill the water. And off you go. You got a completely portable washer. That's good. One hundred percent. No hoses. No leads. Um, you know, it's not a petrol unit, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't have an ETA for you guys. Yeah, but yep. um, yeah. Stay tuned. Yeah, cool. 
What about uh, down the line more? Are there any any? Uh... Oh, this it's always innovation. It's always yeah, it's yeah. always new tools coming. Look without yeah. without going uh, going too into it. Yeah, I know a couple of things that uh, you know are high on the priority list. Um, we do, and we do get asked consumer demand. Yeah, um, is your brushless planer? I do believe it will have our uh, our auto wireless uh, startup system. Yes, okay, um, yeah, which. Many many tradies will be familiar with now. Yeah, uh, that'll sure. that'll adapt into it. Our lighting range is about to expand. Ah, uh, yes, c- considerably. It's all the uh, all the rage now, eh? Lighting. The future is bright. That's all I'll say. Ah, uh, uh, see, I see what you did there. Snuck that one in. Clever. Hold on, hold on. What do, what do we got for that? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> yep. Nah, Nailed so it. New product. So. Yeah, look, um, another thing we could commonly get asked for um, yeah. by tradies is, is obviously some roofing shears. Yes, So to okay. cut your, your corrugated iron roof sheets. Yep. Um, and, yeah, so they'll uh, – look, I uh, can't give an ETA, but they are – they are close. Yep. So yeah. So right. something we, we do get asked about pretty um pretty frequently. Yeah. Because there's heaps of different types of shears. Eh? I've yeah. I've used, you know, a few of the basics when I was um doing my carpentry stuff, but – but yeah, I didn't realise how extensive the um the demand for different types of shears, you know, for specific uses is. Yeah, correct. So we, we've done um we've done sort of cordless eighteen volt shears for for nearly ten years. Yeah. Um, we we do sort of three or four different models. Yeah. Um, we also do a nibbler to complement that yeah, range. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just don't have uh, don't quite have the one that does the corrugated iron that goes up and down. Yep. Hips and valleys. So yeah, righto. That and unfortunately, that's the one that we always get asked for. Yeah. So, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So that'll that hopefully won't be too far away either so all you uh all you roofers out there that are using our tech guns yeah just just hold out a little bit longer <laughs> yeah yeah we got you we got, we got you. you we got you we're gonna have you covered shortly um and then probably the last one that you know without going there's obviously a lot of product coming but yeah another frequent one we get asked for is some fibro shears so okay right um anyone sort of doing some you know fibro cladding yeah uh, some feats for all you chippies out there yeah um that you know are you currently either using the hand shears yeah um makita offer a power version but yeah the, the cordless ones um it on definitely, the, definitely beats using a grinder. I'll oh, tell you that for much. sure. Yeah. Well, that's uh, fast becoming a thing in the past. Using grinders on uh, anything fibro or even you know. Yeah, it's it's not even safe anymore. So look, no. the beauty of the fibro is it's 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 essentially dustless. Yeah, a dustless, yeah. A dustless system. Yeah. Um, so once again, there's something that's we're frequently getting asked for at a lot of trade events we do. For sure. Um, yeah. And, and you know, to any to any tradies that are listening. Yeah. do give feedback we do take it on board and it yep, does yep. get passed does yeah. get passed down the line and does end up back in the uh, the tech lab back in Japan yeah cool and, uh, and that's ultimately what happens the products come out so. very good so keep asking questions guys because uh, that's how the research and development sort of starts I guess correct, you know, correct. supply and demand what's your uh, what's your role in the business mate what do you what do you actually do um, what do I, what do I do? Yeah, it's a very uh, very big question. No, um, so technically my title is uh, is state sales manager for, yep. for Queensland for South. Yeah, so okay. We're, um, very lucky in Queensland. We 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 actually split the, the state into two. Yes, um, right. Much like they want to do for daylight savings. Uh, to give you an understanding, sort of we sort of my team looks after anywhere um, from Bundaberg all yep. the way down to actually we actually cross over to the dark side. We actually go over the border. Ah, uh, yeah, right. Down to uh, down to down to sort of uh, your Ballander, Ballander, yep, and yep. Uh, and Grafton, yep, and everywhere in between. Um, so I have a, a team that works with me, team yeah. reps essentially. Um, yep. I've got um, I've got seven. Seven sales reps. Yeah, look after all your all your trade tools and all your power tool dealers. Yep. yep. Um, very lucky. All of those reps have been with Makita for a long time as well. So yeah, right. Got, you know, I've got three, four reps that have got 10, 15 years experience. Yeah, so yeah. Very. So you you spend a, a lot of your time actually travelling around to to different places. I suppose that'd be like the bulk of it, eh? A hundred percent. Yeah, I spend a yep. lot of time uh, a lot of time in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Little, pl- little plug for Ford here. Little Ford, the Ford Ranger gets an absolute, yeah, absolute <laughs> building. Good. A lot of K's every year, but um, yep. yeah, a lot of travel, seeing dealers. Um, I don't get to quite get to see as many end users and tradies on site as I'd yep. like to, but yep. it's still a very uh, important part of our business. Yeah, for um, sure, absolutely. So yeah, so obviously we obviously oversee all that. Um, obviously, look after the great people. So uh, here at Trade Tools, yeah, very good. <laughs> Where does the um. Where does it, does it split at the bloody Tropic of Capricorn? So like one, the northern is the cyclonic and then you take anything below that, is that, um, or is that a bit further up? A little bit further up. Yeah, a little right bit further. It's basically just set out on, um, on geographical and how far our reps can travel. Okay, to right. Yeah. cover people. So we try to cover, we cover it, we cover every dealer. If you're in Australia, yeah. we uh, we look after you. It doesn't matter where you are, we'll find a way to get there, whether yeah, it's yeah. planes, four-wheel drives, yeah. helicopter, we'll find a way to get there. <laughs> Hell yeah. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Having quite... 
haven't quite made it to the helicopter yet. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, look, we yeah we got a great team. So we got seven sales reps. If, you know, for anyone who wants to know, we've also got four guys. Uh, what we call business development reps. Yeah, and they'll spend time on site speaking to customers and stuff like that. Uh, we've got a trainer. There's yep. a trainer up here for all our product training for, okay. for dealers and for tradies. Yeah, if anyone wants to know more and uh, and. Or importantly, too, we have a, a really good service department based um, based in Brisbane here. Yep. So, yeah. So, for for let's say a, a business that wants to get in contact with you guys, how do they go about that to actually have one of these reps come out to them and come? Um, well, there's sort of a couple of ways. Um, the best way would be to go through your local dealer. Yeah. Right okay. Away. Right. If you go through local, especially if you build a good relationship with them. Your local yep. tool shop. Go in there and say, I've got got some Makita gear or I need some Makita gear. Yep, yep. Can I speak to a rep or can I mm-hmm. you know, see a rep? Yep. Um, and, and generally the stores will be more than happy to, to, to give us your details. Yeah, um, for sure. If you don't have a, a tool store, um, I mean, if you get on our website, makita.com.au, there's yep. a form there to fill out and yeah, that right information, on. it doesn't sort of just get lost in the technical end. It does get forwarded down to us quite regularly. Yep. Um, yep. And just put as much information in as you can, you know. Yeah, right. And we do, we do actually like seeing the consumer direct and spending time with For them. For sure, it's, yeah. It's, it's very valid information we can get. Absolutely. Out of so. Yeah, well, they're sort of uh, essentially it's ground zero eh, for um for business. Yeah, correct, mate. It's uh, and it's an enjoyable part of the job too. It's actually we yeah. enjoy spending time with them, and actually, it's it's one thing to learn about a tool in a classroom. It's yeah. another thing to actually see that the you know, applications and how the guys that use them day in day out use yep. them. Um, For sure, you know, and what how we can improve the business essentially. Yeah. Where's the head head honcho sort of? Where's the head office? Uh, the head honchos. They they're all based in uh, in Western Sydney. Yeah. Okay. Head right. Office, head office out there. So we've got a head office in. Um, I'd be really just spitballing if I guessed how many staff are in there. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, head office is there. All um, our warehouse is there too. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So all your all your Makita product comes comes out of there. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's where, that's the headquarters, and obviously the the. That's sort of the motherland factory they call it. It's obviously in uh, in Japan. Yes, uh, of that's, course. Uh, I think I believe the town's called Anjo in Japan. Oh. That's uh, that's where the that's where it all starts. So. Have you uh, have you been over to Japan? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. I uh, I missed out on the on the trip last year. But there's yeah, right. a lot of Makita staff have been there. A yeah, lot okay. of Makita staff. So, so there's constant sort of um, interaction between Makita in Japan and and over here. And correct. Yes. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Well, our our, our MD in Australia, um, he, he's, he's Japanese, so mm. he's he's directly from Japan. Um, yep, he's worked yep. for Makita for I think close to twenty five years. So yeah, right. Eh? There is a very it's very close link. Yeah, very very close link, and we have you know numerous visits. They come over see us, and we yeah. go over and see them. And yeah, it'll be a good spot to go. Eh, Japan, it'll be awesome. Enjoy a bit of sushi and yeah, <laughs> sake. Sake's the uh, beverage over there. Yep. Isn't it warm? Don't they drink it warm? I think. I, I have. Y- I think you can. It's, yeah. it's, it's I think it's like it's user preference. I think if you want if you want it cold, I'll give it to you cold. But I think right. the traditional way. Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah. I think it is warm the traditional way. Well, same with. I uh, know oh, we're going a bit off topic, but who cares? That's what <laughs> we do here. I think in England, right? They, I, apparently, this, now this blows my mind. Warm, like room temperature beer, is a normal thing. Correct. I've heard that. I've never been, but that seems so crazy. Like I, I get that. Maybe because it, it's so cold there, I I just cannot fathom the idea of lukewarm beer. No, nah, there's nothing enjoyable about that from an Australian point of view, is there? No. <laughs> no, I just, I've never been able. But when I first heard it, I thought there is no way that's true. No, no human would drink warm beer. Yeah, maybe we're drinking the wrong beer. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not going to trade my cold beer for anything. I'll tell you. No, nah, you don't. I, I tell you what, I couldn't. I've done it before. You know, you drink it the old uh, Corona sitting in the esky, and it's it's warm. And it, desperate times call for desperate measures. It, it was purely a survival thing. I was. Uh, it was a thirst. You know, there was no water around. It wasn't desperation. I swear. <laughs> Just got to jump in here again quick, guys. Did you know one of the great things about the interwebs? If you can't make it to one of our stores, don't fret. We can just send our products to you no matter where you are. So kick back, grab a cold one and have a gander at tradetools.com and get your tools and accessories sent to your doorstep or job site. Always buy tools responsibly. Trade Tools claims no responsibility for grumpy partners. Anyway, back to the podcast. Uh, so before we started the podcast, we uh, done a call out on Insta to see uh, if any guys had any questions for Makita. And I just got to click through the story here. One minute. All right. Questions. Are there any plans? This is from Nate. Are there any plans from Makita to bring a cordless table saw to the market? Ooh, that's a good question. Yeah. I know, uh, I know a few competitors have, uh, have you know, gone to market with theirs. Yeah. I would imagine so. I would imagine so. Table saw. 
A table saw. I'm t- like a mitre saw. What's the nah. difference between what are we? So a table saw looks like this table, and the yeah. blade comes like up through. the Oh middle yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, yeah. Rip and simmer down. Yeah, rip. Yeah, yeah. I would. Uh, uh, so what was that guy's name? Nate. Nate. Yeah. Oh, Nate. I would imagine so. I yeah. Right. So always. Uh, I don't have any because they're they're a pretty high like power draw tool, aren't you? Well, it'd be a prime example of where eighteen times two with the two eighty yeah, volt sure, batteries yeah. would, would work really really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would imagine so, and I to be honest, we, we make two different table saws uh, with yep. like power ones now, so it's um, it's not foreign foreign to us at yeah, all. Yeah, true. Um, yep. I don't have any information of an ETA. Yeah, yeah. But doesn't mean that uh, doesn't mean that it's not coming shortly. Oh yeah, slap one of them Effie cut blades on there, mate. You're laughing. <laughs> yeah, I had to think, think about that, didn't yeah, you? I was, <laughs> no, I, was just, I had it before, and then I lost it. But yeah, them, yeah, they're impressive blades. I got to say. All right, here we go. Oh, this is from Trady Brady, Brady, let's say Brady. Uh, Any plans on a cordless M or H-class vacuum? That is a really, really good question. Yeah. Um, And I do get asked that nearly daily at the moment. So without going off topic, um, to answer your question, yes, 100%. Yeah. That has to be. So um, with the the dust extraction, obviously, a lot of people are aware now it's the law's legislation is is really, um, it's moving forward. Um, Has... do you know if if that uh, legislation has like officially made a change yet, or because oh, there's a lot of talk about it? But there's a lot of talk, um, not officially that I'm aware. Um, yeah, and I've also noticed we, we're hearing different things. We obviously work together as a, as a, as a like just you know a, a countrywide company, and we yeah, talk. Yeah, and yeah. different states are obviously hearing different things. Yes, so for it's sure. even more confusing when you can't yeah. when you don't have a, a, a countrywide standard, like a national bloody yeah, but. The, the the laws and the legislations around are changing dramatically. Yeah. Um, and we're noticing that even with their two with their two forty volt vacuums, like the demand for them in the last twelve months has just yes skyrocketed. Yeah, Nothing right. we could have ever forecasted or predicted. Okay. Um, but yes, with their, it, it's it's really a no brainer. We will obviously look at an M class vac will be the next one, and then the H class one. We'll, we'll probably look where the legislation goes first. And yep. how, how hard for they're sure, going to go. Yeah. H class is there is a giant. Step up, and yeah. it is uh, it is a huge price difference. A huge price, and, the, yeah, and the it's, technology. Eh? The technology is one thing; the price is another. But the, the, you also got to think of the servicing and, and the other side of yes. it afterwards, yep. Um, yep. Which, which you have to be set up to do. Yeah. Um. So there's obviously a lot that goes into it. Yeah. Um, if if H class became the standard, it would uh, we'd have to uh, manage it, but it would it hinder. Would, it would hurt a lot of uh, small business. It would throw a massive spanner in the works. Yeah. And then. Please be clear on this too that there is no price you can put on safety, especially no, after what's happened yeah, to people. But yes. um, you know, I just it, it is moving the right direction. Yeah. Um, once it all gets sort of set in stone and we've got some guidelines, um, yeah. us as manufacturers, trade tools as, re- as sellers, yep. we will have to be all over this. Um, of course, we, we're so, we are moving with it at the moment. We yep. have solutions um, with your M and M class fax as well yep. for any yep. of our tools that make a dust, a saw, a drill, or something like that. So sure. we have solutions there. I think um, sh- soon, uh, I think we're getting a guest in, but she knows exactly what the legislations are doing. So yeah. that'll be an episode coming up soon that will hopefully simplify this whole thing for uh, for everyone. Which, yeah. yeah I, we, think I, I think, think that would be the best thing. Get some, yeah. we'll get some clarification around it. And, yep. and I think, you know, I think we'll, we may all look back um, in five, six years' time, I think, on some of this stuff and go, wow. Like, I remember when I started at Makita, we have dust extraction, but yep. like it was never, the demand was never there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and now it's every conversation we have. We even have builders. Like I said previously, you asked me about contacting. We have builders come to us at trade shows. Yeah. What do you recommend? Or how do I get away? With, how can I get get through this? Yeah. And, uh, we even have suppliers of like um, hardy product. You know, yeah, yeah. So they're going. Yeah. What are you recommending? And we're like, well. True. This is what we can think it works, but that, that you have to ask what your what your site thinks as well. Yes, the other thing yep. too is you have legislation. You also have your workplace health and safety. Yes. Your, your site rules. Yeah, because a lot of sites, um, you know, prefer to go above and beyond. Yeah, not just not just meet the standard, but better it, which it would, which can be an issue too. Because yep. I know I have heard stories in Brisbane, on a commercial site where they went to H class. Yeah, right. And, uh, so you know, H class guys, and there's yep. 500 subbies on the site. Yeah, it's probably not even five hundred H class. Oh, so they in so they uh, demanded yeah. any subbies uh, meet H class. H class, and this and this is and it was probably an overreaction because yeah, yeah. Um, for those subbies in Australia, those tradies in Australia who aren't yeah you know, sort of familiar, but over in Europe and America, 
Yeah. They're miles ahead on this stuff. Yeah. They're okay. Like yeah. Years ahead of, ahead of where we are. We're yeah. playing a bit of catch up. And obviously, yeah, if you, I think they probably, we have had some overreaction from some people. But yes. like to go yeah. straight to a H class on everything, they, they, you know. Yeah, um, it's extreme, eh? It's very extreme. Need to transition into something so big. I think America too, but mostly Europe has uh, been really, really. Uh, aware if i don't know if that's the right word of uh dust extraction for a long time yeah, yeah. they're also really good um with their changing the top changing the topic is on any vibration oh yeah they're massive yeah. on that so using your big breakers and your big jackhammers yeah they're huge on that they um you know for how many you know without getting your they call it white knuckle syndrome yes yes yep. we're going to make some really good hammers that have that function i get that i get white knuckle syndrome every time i'm in the car with me missus <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> no, no. <nah. laughs> so, but um, but mate, yeah, really good question. Um, yeah, and mate, as soon as something could be coming out, trade will be the first ones to hear about it. For sure, mate. <laughs> Very good. You're answering all these questions just perfectly, right? Okay, so we've got oh Nate again. Nate must be a Makita man. What's one accessory that isn't well known but an absolute must have from Makita? Hmm. That is, yeah, a, that is a massive question. Like, that's good. This, we got, I've got a phone book of an accessory catalogue. Yeah, right. Uh, of all the different accessories. Mm. Um, might go for something that I think is a, a personal one. Yeah. Um, what you can actually get is we do – I'll give you the model number. It is a DTW800. It's yep. a 7 16th brushless big impact draw, like an impact wrench essentially. Yeah. But basically what you can put in the end of that is like, you put your big shipping augers in there to drill through like fence posts. Okay, right. Or any builders on here they're doing tie down. Yeah. Um, to, you know, sort of dr- put your big auger bits on to yep, drill yep. through. One accessory I love on that that you can put on that, it costs, it retails for about $10. And you yeah. can actually put an adapter in there to turn it into a half inch or a three quarter wrench. Right. So realistically, it's two tools in one. Yes, straight, okay. It's straight away. And it's a, a $10 part. And yep. it, I just, I, nearly every time I sell one, I insist that the guys, yeah. Well, I mean, We've had some good success with it as well. So, so the seven sixteen. What what are the like we're running the mill ones? They're five sixteen, right? I should know this. You should I'm know this. Brad from Trade Tools, but because <laughs> <laughs> they're running the mill ones, hey, they're five sixteen, I believe. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And then the seven sixteen are the the big brothers. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So so you basically you put your shipping auger into it and you drill yep. through um hardwood posts. Like yep. give you an idea if you're drilling with a cordless drill. Yeah. Which you, our one gives you the Makita unit will give you about 125 newton meters of torque. Yep. Using this this tool, it gives you about eight. 100 newton meters. Oh, right. And it just safety things a massive thing too. Yep, the yep. Drill will tend to want to spin and kick around of on course, you. Of course, yep. This one, it's a one handed tool. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right. Got a, it's got like a clutch mechanism in it. It won't rotate on you. Yeah, okay. And, and then just slap the little things in. You got yourself a yeah. impact wrench. And you got sort of two tools in one. Um, and the impact wrench at 800 newton meters. I mean, it's going to yeah. do, do 99% of. Yeah, the true. Task. If you can't use, if you can't get it off with that, well, you probably just need an oxy, mate. To be yeah, honest. yeah, yeah. Just well, it can't be stuck if it's if it's liquid. <laughs> Edward, yeah. yeah. Nate again. I like this guy. When can we see batteries with larger capacities coming from Makita? <laughs> oh. Just a matter of time, wasn't that yeah. the question? It was coming. Um, yeah, once again, another great question because we get asked this all the time on yeah. site, with our on-site visits and stuff, and the answer is it's very under lock and key. Yeah, yeah, so of course. It's, uh, way, yeah. Above, way above my clearance code. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I really don't have any whole of information to give you yeah. on that one. Next I, thing it'll be um, your Instagram handle will be uh, not homeless, I don't know, <laughs> job, jobless, job searching. Job yeah, searching. jobless, Mick. Yeah, yeah above, my, above my clearance code, unfortunately, mate. Yeah, yeah. Where's the biggest... You it was six amp hour, we're, right? We're at a six amp, we're yeah, at a six yeah. amp battery. Yeah. I think yeah, I think to keep in mind, and we know competitors make bigger batteries. Yeah, but yeah. you look at what a six amp battery can do, and yeah. the, the runtime you get out of it on some of our saws and drills yeah, and know, is yeah. actually phenomenal anyway. Ah, oh, who was that? Was, um, someone done a, a test on the Makita, one of the compound miter saws with a two times eighteen volt uh, with an effort cut blade, and done a cut test on two seventy five by forty five. It was. It was an LVL. Yes. Yes. I, do you remember the number? Oh, it was impressive. It, was, it, was, it might have been a couple hundred cuts or something. Yeah, like, I, I think I, it was. I was yeah. trying to think that we do a lot of these sort of tests and stuff like that. And we try and, once again, whatever's relevant to us here in Queensland may not yep. be relevant to what they use for building material in other states. So yes, it is of hard. Yeah. Um, but the, like, the runtime, the tools with the brushless technology, you yeah. are still getting good runtime. Yeah, just it, to compound that too is we know as competitors have bigger batteries, but yeah, yeah. charge times are really, really good. They're, they're, they're market leading. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. you pull a 6 amp battery off and yes. you got our dual charger system. You've got two batteries ready to go in 55 minutes. To answer that question, it's under lock and key. Mm-hmm. But um, as soon as I know, 
Yep. You'll know. Well, the people are, <laughs> the people are going to ask the hard questions, That's eh? It. All right, let's see if there's any new ones here, mate. There's another one saying, is there a bigger battery in the making? JJ done it. It's uh, under lock and key, mate. Uh, that'll do us for the questions, I reckon. That's that's about all there yeah, is. They'll keep rolling in, but it's too late, guys. It's too late. Sorry. <laughs> Before we wrap it up, tell us a bit more just about you. Like, yeah, you know, about, regardless of Makita, what, you got a one kid, yeah. boy, girl? A uh, little boy. How old? He, he's third birthday. Ooh. Well, uh, two weeks ago, so that, right. was, uh, that so was a big event. So Nearly uh, same age as my boy. He's about to turn three, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he, he's a Makita, little Makita boy. He loves yeah, his, yeah. Uh, I think somebody got him for his birthday a little, like, plastic, like, toy drill. Yeah. So, like, you have to pull, like, the trigger thing to make it, like, spin. Yep, yep. And he just... Nothing to it. Straight out, straight out into the garage. He's got a little Makita twelve volt drill. Yeah, the eighteen volts a little bit heavy for him, and yeah, yeah, just put a little drill bit in there for him and drill into some timber. Yeah, cool. So he, uh, he loves it, but um, yeah, I but walked down um me front veranda the other day, and Atlas had his little uh, bike turned upside down and had my little tool kit there <laughs> and he's working, trying to work around it with the tools and, oh, man, how good is that? Monkey see, monkey do it. Yeah. Yep. Dad, if Dad can do it, I can do it too. Mm. So, but, um, but, yeah, mate, look, when I'm, when I'm not trying to be uh, be father of the year yep. um, and husband of the year, yep. I um, play a bit of footy. So oh, yeah. I try to play a bit of football, I should say. Yeah, I get puffed thinking about it nowadays. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, a little bit heavier than when I used to play when I was a bit younger, so yep, yep. it's a bit harder, but um, try and play a bit of footy. and. Yep. Um, and try and just stay outdoors as yeah. much as I can. So yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, a bit of camping. Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to do yeah. a bit more fishing, but yeah, same. So I'd like to do I, more fishing. I love it, but just, just a time thing. I know time's a <laughs> currency at the moment. <laughs> exactly. I'm, and I'm running out of money, mate. That's <laughs> it, it, yeah. Um, I've been tending to my uh, my grass and garden lately. I yes. feel like I'm embracing. Uh, I'm 30 now, so. You know, I'm starting to embrace it. Just, I'm just rolling into it, mate. And I'm yeah. wearing my pants a bit higher, getting oh, out there, telling the kids to stay off the new grass. Mate, I'm the exact same. We um, we laid some new turf. Did you? Yeah. Ago, and I just to any landscaper that lays turf, it's listening to this. Oh, I've I done, take my hat off to you. Yeah, I've done heaps it, of it, it when it, I was doing civil. I tell Ooh. you now, I, we laid about uh, 500 square meters. Yep. And I had my brother and my brother more helping me. Yep. And I, I laid about 25 square meters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And they're both they're both trainees. So they're a bit more fitter than I am. Yep. Thank God for them too, because I was I basically used to do the hose just watering it. <laughs> yeah, I got this, fellas. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. Oh, uh, cool. How many square meters is on a pallet? I can't remember. Oh, well, I would have had. Six or seven pallets. Did yeah, yeah, it's a fair. That's yeah, a fair bit of hard jacket there. Yeah, it was, good. and that was just the front. Like we, um, we got a one acre block, so I'm, yep. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not laying turf on the whole of it. No, no way. way. Nah, but um, grassy mate. That's what grassy is yes. for. Just, just <laughs> flick it around, give it to the kids here. Go and do that. <laughs> exactly. Or just yeah, don't leave the sprinkle on overnight, like we've managed to do a few times. Oh yeah. So the grass is really green. Just to throw it out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really yep. green at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, so you you own your house then? Yeah, yeah, nice. Mortgage like everyone, I think these days. Mm. Sorry, not everyone, but yeah, the majority yeah. of us. Oh, uh, shots fired. Now. Yeah, no, we me and my wife were lucky. We um, yeah, we built a house, our house, and we sort of want to raise yeah. the family in and yeah, um, cool. A bit, a bit of room to, to run a market at the back. Very good. That's live, build a uh, motocross track, mate. Cutting a dam, right? Here we go. Now, hear me out. Cutting a dam, a good deep dam with some, you know, different uh, levels underneath. Stock it with bass and mate, uh, yeah, oh yeah. Now, yeah. We're sort, now we're talking. Yeah, we're on now the something. Now I can work on that fishing. Yeah. <laughs> we actually, um, uh, I lived up at Bracken Ridge for a while mm. and uh, there was, I'm going to say it anyway, we weren't meant to, but we could, we were catching bass out of uh, sort of the back of a dam. They get caught there, right? Yeah. And uh, we transplant them to, old mate, he lived, and his property backed onto a, a creek with a huge, huge dam down the back. Yep. And uh, we used to take the the bass and stock it because they actually used to drain that the back of that dam out, and and uh, like their fish and lungies and that to die, and they try and transfer as many, but heaps to die. So essentially, we were saving the fish. Doing a favour, you know. And then we get to fish down the back <laughs> and and catch and release them all the time. And oh, good fun the old fishing in it. It was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I don't know if I left to edit that bit out, but you know what? That's what I've done. Find me. What are you going to do? Yeah. All right, mate. Well, uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah. That was a good, uh, good chat. And I'll just make sure there's no more questions before we uh, sign it's off. Been tough, tough hard ones. Yeah. The battery one was coming. I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah, for that's sure. Some, that's a day in, day out thing. Yep. 
All right, refresh. That, I get that question, and the second most common question I get is, when's the coolest, coolest toasty maker coming out? Oh, ah, really? Yeah, I get that all the time. Yeah, right. Because what, what other cordless, uh, like, strange thing? Coffee, yeah. ma- coffee machine. Yeah, right, so yeah. We call, call us coffee machine. So yep. if anyone does uh, a bit of camping, or maybe not, if you're oh, on salt, yeah, if you're on salt, you've generally got some power. But if you're camping, yeah. we're not doing that. It's, that's what I got camping. Yeah, right. Got straight in. Like, it's, yeah. only, um, it's only small, you know, but. You'll have to bring one in. We'll have to have a go. You sort that out. It's not an issue. Excellent. All right, let's have a look. Oop, I'm asking a question. I, I, you think I'd be better at this Instagram <laughs> thing by now. It's a big phone, that. It is, I know. That's the problem. My hands are too stumpy yeah. for the big screen. Nah, all good. We're clear. Clear, mate. All good. Well, thanks for coming in. Mate, thanks for having me. That's all right. It was a, it was a pleasure, as always. Cheers, mate. All right. Well, there we have it. Another episode wrapped up, guys. I'd love to hear your feedback. And you can email me at tradio at tradetools.com or message the Trade Tools social pages with any topics you'd like to hear about. And, of course, be sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up to date. Until the next episode, see ya!